Okay. Everybody's okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks to all the commissioners for joining us. Um, first on our order of business is the approval of minutes for March 20th, 2020. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Is there a second? I'll second I, it, Jeff. Okay. Who, who, Randy. Who was first? Randy first. I have a first and a second. Any any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye with names. Aye, Jeff. Aye, Wayne. Phil Michael Schmidt. Thank you. All right. Is that all five of us? Hi, Randy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next on the agenda, Commissioner reports and comments. Uh, Court, you asked me if you could go first. Um, yes, Jeff. Uh, thank you. Um, go. Just have two things that I wanted to get taken care of. That's all right. Can we come here? Can we come here um, on the phone with commissioners? Sorry, it, there's some background talking, but um, first. I would like to ask for a consensus for a letter to be written to the governor asking for complete control of the reopening of Washington County with the leadership of our local health department, emergency management, and our hospital system. We, uh, we need to have somebody's got a dog in the back. We need to have that. Can, can we please mute unless you're speaking? Okay, Court, would you begin it over? Because it was very. Uh, it was, that's fine. Okay. Um, I would like to ask for a consensus for a letter to be written to the governor asking for complete control of the reopening of Washington County with the leadership of our local health department, emergency management, and our hospital system. I know that we can safely and more efficiently open Washington County. The last three weeks I've asked about youth camps opening on June 15th. I've contacted the state and talked to our local health officials. I know and they know we can safely do this, but without local leaderships, the camps have no direction. Over the weekend, I know I've been contacted, as I am sure all of you have also been contacted, by many businesses asking what they can and cannot do. They have reached out to the health department, and sometimes the directives from the, states, the state has been unclear. We cannot allow our businesses and citizens to flounder without direction. I have many examples of other businesses that want to open and can't, don't have a time frame when they can open, don't understand why their business is not allowed, but others are. They are all willing to abide by safety measures. They just need to know what they are and be tailored to their businesses. With local control, we the commissioners, with the expertise of the health department, emergency management, and the hospital system can open up Washington County safely and efficiently. So I ask for consensus to write a letter to the governor asking for total control of opening up Washington County. Are you waiting on a consensus, Court, or are you going to move on to the next one? I, I'm waiting on a consensus. I'll speak. Uh, I, 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 uh, I agree completely. I, I, what I won't do is go rogue without the, and violate an executive order, but I will definitely support a letter, and I'll definitely, uh, I definitely would insist on, uh, if, we, if we went rogue, we didn't have any backup from health department or uh, emergency management. So I would definitely with follow the lead if the governor grants us permission to do this with advice and guidance from emergency management and uh, local health departments, Earl and Tom Brown and, and whoever whoever their team is with them. Uh, so I think it's there's a safe way to do it. Uh, I'll leave it to the experts what that way is to do it. I want to get people back to work. I heard from numerous people this, this week, you know, Mr. Jimmy had uh, White Tiger Martial Arts. No reason that I, I've known I've known them for quite a while. They do a great community service. I think they could come up with a plan. I think they already have how to operate safely as an exercise and uh, as a program, especially catering to the youth. But again, I would insist on uh, uh, the governor's permission with guidance from the health department. That's the only way we can get our guidance with the governor's permission from the health department and uh, emergency services. But I'm I'm on board with that if that's the way if it turns out the way I just said it. Hi, this is um, Commissioner Wayne Kiefer speaking. Um, I also support a letter to the governor in some form or fashion. I also have a letter prepared.
that maybe we could, you know, um, discuss what's important to each commissioner based on what we've heard from our constituents. I've also heard from constituents over the past two months, and I know we all have, of how disruptive their lives have been. And I certainly don't want to fault the precautionary measures that were taken early on, um, but I'm so very glad that some of those numbers and figures have turned out to be um, overestimates. I think we do, I've seen, I, I've seen for myself, citizens are being responsible when they're in the stores, when they're shopping. Uh, it doesn't make sense that some stores are open and others are not. Um, I would like to also, I would fully support drafting a letter asking that some of those decisions can be made locally, if not all. I'd like to also remind our group, our commissioners that I'm pretty sure, I know for sure, we serve as the Board of Health also in Washington County. We sometimes transition from time to time from Board of County Commissioners to the Board of Health. Maybe we can seek our own legal advice through our County Attorney, Kirk, to see what authority that already entails to us. And we also have our um, Health Community Health Advisory Committee that was reconstituted about a year or two ago. And maybe we can use them for guidance as well and, and help to put forth some, some good measures. So yes, absolutely, I agree. I have a letter that I would like to share with our commissioners later on, and um, I, I won't read it, it's a bit too lengthy, but absolutely, I agree. Let's make that request to the governor. Uh, this is Terry. Uh, I think, uh, all three of you have made uh, outstanding contributions uh, in providing a letter to the governor to get our community uh, back in business. Uh, as we all know, there's many businesses out there suffering uh, tremendously. They need to get back in business as soon as possible. And uh, I guess uh, my only question was, uh, and I can't remember how you worded it at the beginning court, but uh, so we're going to be requesting and asking the governor to let us uh, take control and, and get our businesses back in uh, business here in Washington County. It's not going to be a demand type letter, correct? Uh, I don't think I don't think we can demand it. I would strongly ask for this. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's all. I I just I didn't remember if I heard the word uh, how it was presented or how you mentioned it there at the beginning. But no, yeah, no. just yeah. ask for complete control of reopening. Oh no, I agree with it. I agree with it. I think uh, we need to get moving forward as soon as possible. And uh, I'd also uh, make sure we uh, be, be mindful of uh, the comments that uh, Commissioner Wagner had made uh, concerning the health department and the EOC. Well, yes, and that's what I'm asking is, so complete control of reopening Washington County with the leadership of our local health department, emergency management, and our hospital system. As long as the governor's okay with that, yes. Okay, there are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, are you still in? Hello, Jeff. Randy, go help me. I might have to. I'll walk All right. down. I'm, un oh, I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. All right. I, too, support a, le a letter to the governor requesting more local regional control by the county commissioners here in Washington County. Um, I think we know best with the guidance of our EOC and health department and the hospital. I think we can open up business for Washington County based on those statistics. Um, regional control is important that we know our people best. I think I've seen a lot of evidence of people exercising control and restraint and responding to all the rules is important that we get our economy up and running before the cure becomes worse than the pandemic pandemic so i would suggest that we get some information to our county administrator and legal team to form a draft letter for the commissioners to review and edit and get that out as promptly as possible so therefore i you have my consensus to move forward any other commissioners, officially? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Wayne Kiefer here again. Again, I, I support a letter. Um, Thank I, you. I, it's clear that, you know, if a business chooses not to reopen, that's their prerogative. If, if someone chooses not to venture out, 
into commerce, that's their prerogative. We're not mandating that anyone participate in an activity they personally feel uncomfortable. But we know it's disrupting lives, and I would agree yeah. wholeheartedly. Yep. Personal choice defending our civil liberties. Uh, that's two consensus. Uh, court, Randy, Terry, court. okay? Yep. Court, I'm, I'm definitely for it. Okay. Everybody did, Jeff. All right, I'm just summing it up, making sure we have it for the record. Now, Court, you said you had another item? Yes. Secondly, um, I, would, I would like to ask for a consensus again um, that we uh, start meeting in, uh, in person again and as soon as possible, and as soon as possible, open it up for um, citizen participation. Uh, again, with, with the health department's uh, guidance. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. Or I've been I've been in here for two months waiting for that, but I think we did we did tread easy on that and and took the high road that you know to uh, protect everybody. So yeah, but I, I do agree it's it's time, and I think all the commissioners are actually here today. We're just in different rooms uh, on this teleconference. So yeah. All right. Any other commissioners in support of that? I guess start the 26th. With our next meeting. Okay. And uh, everybody okay with doing that? We'll, we'll assign staff to help us set up all the social distancing and how we would do it for the 26th. Is that okay? Court management, I'm good. Randy Widener, I'm good. Terry Wayne. Terry's good. Uh, the only okay. thing that I want to caution on is uh, trying to mandate that the EOC or the health department has to get involved or be yeah. part of it uh, if you, unless the governor. Uh, we'll go, we'll use the social distancing and all the other guidance from the uh, EOC to help us arrange that meeting to be set up. How's that sound? I'm good with that, Randy. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that one too. I'm not talking about the other uh, member to the government. Sorry. All right. All right. Court, do you have anything else in comments? Uh, that's it for now. Thank you. All right. Vice President Baker, would, would you have any comments? I uh, yeah, have a uh, few. Uh, again, I'd just like to give a special thanks. Uh, for our EOC, our health department, Meredith Hospital, everyone involved uh, with providing updates. Yeah. Am I, am I okay? All right. Hey, good meeting this morning. I think we, we've got some people who aren't. Commissioner Klein. Everyone, we have muted everyone. If you're going to speak, please unmute yourself. But other than that, please keep yourself on mute. There's a lot of echo in the background. Okay, this is Commissioner Baker. I'll, should I continue with Commissioner comments? Yes, I can hear ahead. you good, Terry. Yeah. You're okay, Commissioner Klein? Terry, there were a lot of, it, it was really hard to hear you. Why don't you start over, please? Okay, is Commissioner Klein on? Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay I'll start. Commissioner Call, comments. Uh, again, I'd just like to give a special thank uh, thanks to our EOC team, our health department, uh, Meredith, everyone involved uh, with this COVID-19 uh, ordeal, providing us uh, great feedback, great information. And uh, my hats are really off to them. I, I couldn't even begin to understand or uh, do what they do uh, with all of this information and, and then trying to digest it and get the information back to the citizens and the commissioners. I just uh, want to thank them. And uh, they're just doing an awesome job. Our uh, health department, EOC, Meredith, et cetera. Also, uh, we've kind of alluded a little bit about, about businesses getting back open. And uh, I would really like... Uh, I know we're all eager to get our businesses back up and running, but I would really like to thank uh, Delegate Bill Weibel. I think he uh, deserves a special thank you because uh, 
his forward thinking uh, with the letter of support that uh, he asked us all to be supportive of uh, three county you know, for the western three counties was uh, just uh, a really forward thinking move on uh, Bill Wivel's part. And I believe out of that, uh, and I don't think they uh, worked and tried to do uh, bring the whole state together, but I think in the, from the governor's comments, I think he alluded to, I believe he said that there were eight jurors, broke the state up into eight jurisdictions with uh, us being one of them, obviously, uh, Western Maryland. And uh, so other counties and other communities and delegates and leaders were trying to do the same thing for their districts. So uh, hats off to Bill Weibel for doing an awesome job and pulling all of everybody together and getting our senators, our delegates, our, all of our county commissioners, elected bodies throughout the uh, western three counties. So uh, thanks uh, to Bill Weibel for those efforts. Uh, I was going to get into thanking the governor for... Uh, giving you know, the county some latitude, but the uh, courts kind of touched that with a resolution there, a letter that we're going to be sending to them. The other thing that uh, it's going to be of concern to me, uh, and this is just me, I'm not speaking for any county commission, it's just going to be some of my thoughts as we move forward on the budget process. Uh, we have citizens out there that are going to be needing a lot, a lot of help. Uh, businesses are going to be needing a lot of help. So I know uh, once we uh, start moving forward with approving the budget, it's going to be difficult for me to uh, to uh, support uh, a water sewer rate increase. And I know uh, they're going to tell you know they're going to be needed and so forth. But it's going to be really difficult for me to be uh, adding any new cost onto all of our citizens because uh, you know expenses are growing and growing. And uh, I think through this uh, pandemic many of our citizens are going to be losing their jobs or income is going to be less. And uh, I'm going to be doing my best to try to uh, figure out a way to help uh, cut their costs uh, to government. And uh, I'm going to continue to stand for what I've always stood for. And that's uh, less government and lower taxes and fees and so forth. So uh, I know we're going to have a difficult time uh, deciding on how we're going to move forward with this year's budget, but uh, they're just going to be some of my positions when it comes time to, uh, to support a budget. Thank you. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Terry. Wayne, would, would you go next? Yes, Commissioner Kiefer here. I have a, a few things I'd like to share. One, I was able to uh, listen in to our budget hearing, one of the, on, on our YouTube channel. Um, I would like to thank county staff for putting that together. Obviously, it's always best to have a, a public budget hearing with a live audience, but given the circumstance, we couldn't do that. So thanks to our staff for preparing the information and also our staff um, who assembled the video. I, I really enjoy the videos that we can produce you know, here in-house. I think they're very informative, and um, that was another good video. So thanks to staff for doing that. Um, I'd just like to echo what Commissioner Baker said, you know, as elected of leaders, um, we're often asked to make decisions um, on areas that we are not experts on. Um, we often have to rely on our staff, on experts in the community. And that certainly includes our emergency um, services division employees, uh, volunteer fire and rescue employees, our, our local hospital and the medical professionals there, and our health department. So thanks to them for the service that they're providing to us. Um, we play that delegate balancing act. It's, with information and, and that we get and listening directly to citizen concerns. I, I'm stopped in the grocery store every time I've been going these last few months with um, questions and concerns and listening to the fears of citizens. So hopefully this letter that we're suggesting, um, asking the governor to allow us to reopen, will do exactly what we need to do is, is help ease the concerns of our citizens and, and get that process started. Um, I'd also like to make mention one of, you know, we've heard, I've personally heard, and I'm sure we all have, just a, a variety of situations and concerns from our citizens, things that, you know, I'm sure weren't, couldn't all be thought about when a, a closed down or a lockdown began. And one of the issues um, was the issuance of marriage license that couldn't be done during uh, the shutdown because the courthouses were closed. And there's some activity that can take place at a courthouse. I think land sales can be reported and deeds can but marriage license couldn't be issued. And that impacted a couple of citizens who reached out to me. And just to be clear, the, the people getting married didn't reach out to me, their family members reached out to their parents um, asking for help and what could be done. 
And um, I'd like to thank, I have a list of people here. I would like to thank because last week, last Thursday or Friday, the governor did issue an executive order allowing marriage certificates to be applied for um, online. Um, payment could be mailed in and uh, a video oath could be taken with the proper official and, and the, um, the wedding couple. And um, I've reached out to some of our local delegation, Delegate Quarterman and De um, Senator Serafini, who also had some constituent concerns regarding the same issue um, that they were contacted by. Um, they helped to the extent that they could and um, didn't seem like we were getting much of anywhere. So I turned to some contacts that I had um, politically. Uh, Colin Cummings was um, one of the governor's Western Maryland campaign aides. He now works for the governor's office. I had reached out to him. I'd reached out to our local chairman of the Republican Party, Jerry DeWolf, to see what contacts he may have. And he was able to put me into contact with uh, the chairman of the Republican Party who was having a meeting very shortly with the governor. Dirk Hare is chairman of the Re Maryland Republican Party. And uh, another senator not representing our district, um, Senator Justin Reedy who also had some concerns and they were able to share with the governor and get a plan forward. So it's interesting to see all of the different concerns, you know, certainly economic concerns are a priority for many. There's a lot of other concerns out there that needed to be addressed uh, that weren't maybe well thought out or weren't even considered, couldn't be in the short notice that the closure took place. So I just like to thank those individuals for working um, and the governor, of course, for making those decisions to allow marriage licenses to be issued. I think that, Marriage is certainly something that's essential in our society. So thank you for that. That's the end of my comments. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Wayne, Commissioner, Wayne. Commissioner, Baker, Commissioner Baker just wanted to make a, a comment and add to a Wayne's comment on uh, applying for marriage license. I've actually had uh, two calls on uh, register of wills. Uh, estates, uh, families have lost their loved ones, and they're not even able to uh, – get a, an appointment with the register of wills so that they can get some an account in place so they can pay, pay for some funeral services and so forth. And uh, I just uh, wanted to let, let you know that I've had comments or, or calls on uh, register of wills also uh, through the pandemic. And just when you mentioned about marriage certificates, that made me think of the uh, register of wills. So there's others. Uh, that are having some difficulties also. Thank you. Well, Commissioner Baker, this is Commissioner Kiefer again. I would like to propose, it's not something that we need to do right now, but as we start preparing our list of items for the legislative session, list of requests that maybe we work with our delegation, now that we've been through this exercise, unfortunately, we, we know there's a, many things that are essential and maybe we can develop a list of, of ways and procedures that if you know something even more severe were to happen, how we can, have essential government business continue remotely if, if need be. Um, marriage license is being one example, but, and as you mentioned as well, so I would like to work with our delegation as um, they ramp up for the next legislative cycle to see what we can do. All right, um, That's all. thank you, Randy Wagner. Good morning. Randy. Um, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I also want to uh, give my heartfelt thanks to everybody. Uh, I've literally wore through through COVID nineteen. I've wore out some of our emergency service people. Tom Brown, uh, undoubtedly, I get you know twenty emails or twenty calls a week or more on what can we do and what we can. I go right to Tom Brown or, and through Earl. Earl and Tom have done a fantastic job. Uh, I think they've stayed in tune with this as, as best as they can uh, with the ever changing landscape of it. Uh, and I won't belabor this with what the court said in the beginning, but, uh, you know, it, it, I feel the pain because, you know, my own business has suffered uh, dramatically through this. So I feel everybody's pain. I, I probably won't, you know, uh, restaurants and all of them. It's just, it's just a terrible thing. So I guess I don't have to elaborate on that anymore. Uh, and the county, I want to thank the county for doing their part. That we're, we're down at least 50 employees that we haven't hired. Uh, we're, we're working essential, hiring only essential employees with emergency services or dispatch center 911. So I want to thank uh, the directors. I want to thank everybody who's stepped up and and kept the county operating. You know, we can't get down too far because if, when there's that storm and the trees land across the road, we still need people to get that tree off the road or or water main breaks or 
or whatever could happen, you know, the unforeseen again, uh, you know, and, and we get beat up, all the commissioners get beat up. We get beat up on social media. Uh, you know, it is, it goes with the territory. I, I, people just don't know really the, all the facts. I mean, they can, obviously I wouldn't discount their opinions by any means, but there's a lot of facts that, that it would be, and they're welcome to call me and my number is easy to find. And instead of blasting it on social media, it's like, I see constantly that the county raised their property taxes, Well, we didn't raise property taxes. And I see that constantly on social media that they raised the property taxes. What Terry remark on water and sewer, I would, and this is a bad time. I'd certainly entertain listening to the CFO and uh, our, and our powers to be here that, that, and see if they have any solutions to that. Uh, I know that there's more to it than just don't do it, but, uh, I would definitely entertain listening to that. And, and I, and I agree with commissioner Baker, it's a bad time to be putting any more money on, on the citizens. Um, uh, you know, there's probably people that don't know where their next meal is coming from. If they're not getting any benefits from the government and they, they've been out of work, people can't make their house payments. You know, all the deals sound pretty good, but they're, I don't think they're all as good as what they're painted to be in some cases. So uh, there's people I've talked to that haven't got a nickel, you know, uh, and it's just uh, it's just something we need to work through and continue working through. And I'll surely do my part to cooperate and uh, try to make uh, things a little better and easier. I just, you know, we just don't have the crystal ball when all this is going to go away. But anyway, that's 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 what I have. All right, thank you, Randy. I too want to praise Earl Stoner and and Tom Brown, they pro probably regret the day they gave me their phone number, but they've been essential as a co point of contact for me, answering questions for the numerous businesses on how they can or cannot open. And Earl and Tom have been very important in supplying some of the information that can allow some of these businesses to open. Um, I do wanna thank everybody who put the budget together under these pandemic conditions. It's important to have that information out there. Uh, in regards to water and sewer rates, I would have to yield to Sarah. The water and sewer funds are enterprise funds, meaning they have to be self-sufficient. If we don't raise the rates, then do we have to go to the general fund dollars, which means every taxpayer would be paying for the rate payers. So I'm going to ask for Sarah to maybe to provide a solution in response to Mr. Baker and uh, Randy Wagner's request. Um, I too have been besieged by a lot of people with phone calls about their business. Um, I think we're doing a good job by offering this letter to be out there to allow us to do the local control based on our statistics. Um, we can't continue. We got to open America uh, in Maryland and Washington County to go back to normal, not the new normal. We need our businesses open and running and providing jobs and opportunity for all. And I, I believe from everything I observe, Washington County residents are up to that task. One of the things I'd like in our pre-legislative session coming up later this year with the delegation is we need some type of language or law that, uh, and I'll do respect to Governor Hogan, uh, that any additional time of emergency past 30 days would have to come under approval of the legislature. I, I think the original tent of the emergency uh, alert or decoration was for floods and remember South County about two years ago, snowstorms, hurricanes. So I think it would be a appropriate suggestion to ask our delegation to submit legislation um, that anything after 30 days, the, the General Assembly would have to agree and be vote on that. Um, one of the other things I'd like to bring up, I think there is a lawsuit out there uh, challenging the governor on shelter in place. So that's one of the things that the citizens need to know that that's being done. And from what I heard on the news this morning, se several of the state courts have ruled uh, against the governors in the shelter in place. So again, I, I'd like to uh, wait and see the results on that. I'm anxious to hear that. And again, I think the letter and all of us agreeing to a consensus to move forward that shows our citizens that we are standing up for them and trying to get Washington County back to normal. And that concludes my report. Um, next, I'd like to go to reports from county staff. Uh, please introduce yourself and the matter. Um, good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is Jeremy Mose, director of the Division of Environmental Management. Um, if it's okay with the commissioners, I would like to follow up in more detail to questions related to the water and sewer rates from last Tuesday's uh, rate discussion. Um, in response to the question on when the allocation fees and allocation fees for water and sewer were last raised, 
In 2016, both the water and sewer allocation fees were raised. The sewer connection fee was raised from $5,900 to $6,900, and the water connection fee was raised from $1,950 to $2,500. Revenue fluctuates uh, related to these fees from year to year based on development. For example, in 2019, the county generated $256,000 in total connection fees. However, in 2018, we generated $1 million in connection fees. Additionally, the $1,000 fee referenced in the meeting from last week was for a development fee in a specific area, which is over and above the regular connection fee. Um, finally, related to the Morgansville sewer rate discussion, the city charges a quarterly meter fee along with the volume charge to Morgansville residents, which adds an additional element to the comparison of county collections only customers and county full service customers. When comparing the base and volume charges alone, Morgansville residents pay less when based on an average of 12,000 gallons used. However, because the city adds a meter fee to their bill in the amount of $33, Morgansville area residents pay approximately $20 more per quarter than the average county sewer customer. Once the capacity manager, management project is complete, the Morgansville residents will be full service county customers and their total bill is projected to be lower because the county will be treating their sewer and they will no longer be receiving fees from the or excuse me, and they'll longer be receiving fees from Hagerstown. Um, thank you. To, do the commissioners have any questions regarding that? Thank you, Jeremy. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Yes, yes this is uh, Commissioner Miles Schmidt. Um, what I, my big concern last week, and it's still my concern, and um, I, again, I agree with uh, Commissioner Baker and Commissioner Wagner, this is probably the wrong time uh, to do a water and sewer rate, but we've got also have to understand that these are um, enterprise funds. But my big concern is I do not see how we can put a three and a half percent increase on just one part of it. I think if we look at the whole thing and raise it a lower percentage, we can still get the same dollars. Like the, the non-metered sewer charge, you know, if we're raising the metered sewer charge, we should be raising the non-metered charges. Um, those are the things that, I, that uh, I'm looking at is I, I don't think it's fair to raise one without all of them. So um, just wanted to make that a point. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? If not, next staff person, introduce yourself in the matter. Jeff, this is Kirk. Go ahead, Kirk. I've just got a couple of things. Um, I know the commissioners and the county have received a lot of emails uh, from citizens and businesses requesting that the county allow them to reopen. Uh, I just wanted to remind um, the citizenry, um, as we have discussed, that the county government closed no business. That was a function of the governor's executive order and because the county um, closed no business, it doesn't have any authority to allow any business to open up uh, unless the governor says that that's okay. Uh, so I just want to remind um, the citizens of that. Obviously, that's why the commissioners have taken the step to ask for more control. Um, but I just wanted to, to make clear um, that the commissioners understand the desire for economic activity and for businesses to get back to normal, but they don't have the authority to permit that uh, as a county at this point. Second, uh, as you know, uh, some additional amenities are coming back online, particularly at our, our parks, uh, as the governor allows a gradual re reopening. Want to remind people that the gathering restrictions are still in place. You can't have groups uh, larger than 10 um, at any one place, and that people should continue to practice social distancing even um, even when they are participating uh, at our parks. And finally, just want to remind everyone that budget comments are due by 6 p.m. on May 21st. That's Thursday by 6 p.m. Thank you. That's all. Kirk, this is um, Commissioner Kiefer. Um, if you could, you or, or your staff, um, could you forward to us um, what our responsibilities are 
as when we convene as Board of Health, what latitude we have? Is it just financial decisions or um, just what does that entail? Not right now, of course, but when you have time. Yeah, we'll be glad to do that. Thank you. All right. Any Good morning. other staff? This is Sarah Greaves. Can you hear me, Commissioner Klein? Yes, Sarah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I tried to chime in earlier after Jeremy, but I realized I was still muted. Um, Sarah Greaves, Chief Financial Officer, just wanted to add a clarifying statement to what Commissioner Meinl Schmidt said about the non-metered accounts. And as represented last Tuesday, um, originally it was stated by Director Mose that there was a 0% increase, but that that was an error and there was actually supposed to be a 3.5% increase. So we did correct that for the record and um, the accompanying, accompanying documents. Wow, that's hard to say this morning. Anyway, um, I just wanted to clarify that. I also wanted to say that our office and certainly the Department of Water Quality does understand it's a difficult time for our citizens. Um, you know, and I assure you that we have looked at our own operation and reduced where possible um, as evidenced by the list of changes that Director Mose represented last week during the budget conversation. Um, you know, and certainly we did that prior to bringing the proposed rate increase before you. In our opinion, rates must be increased in order to get back to a self-supported status. We see the evidence of that. Um, just by looking at how much of a gap there is between our expenditures and our revenues in both the water and sewer funds. Just in the sewer fund alone, $1.4 million gap between the two. And so as we move forward, um, you know, I would urge the commissioners to um, move forward with the proposed rate increase and limit the impact to rate payers rather than all taxpayers. As Commissioner Klein said, it is correct. If we divert funding acquired from the proposed rate increase to the general fund, all taxpayers will be supporting the enterprise funds. Um, and that was a large contentious issue last year. Um, and as a reminder, using the average of 12,000 gallons per quarter, each 3.5% rate increase costs approximately $6 per quarter um, to our users. Um, and finally, Incremental increases over a period of time has been the existing plan to get the water and sewer funds to a self-supported status. Um, and it would be my recommendation to move forward with that. And that concludes my comment. Thank you. Good. Thank I you. Any other questions? I, I have a question for Sarah. Sure. This Randy. Uh, just hypothetically, uh, and I'm not advocating this, it's just a question. If you say we, it should be done to be self, and I think you said last week within about three years, it would be self-supportive of itself, possibly. Is that a, is that correct, or am I did I misunderstand yes. something? Yes, sir. That's well, correct. Why, as it relates to the sewer well, fund. Just for the sake of argument, what if you didn't this year and just prolonged that an extra year by doing it another year instead of a year that that we're in the middle of a pandemic? Just a question: Would, would that what impact would that have? Would it just put it on the tail end of a of a year longer it takes to get self-sufficient or is that something and, and mm -hmm. you would recommend or extremely or really discourage doing that based on current projections um that is what what our projection shows um you know about a three-year timeline um if in that period of time we need to um request a loan from the general fund i'm speaking in terms of if the water quality fund will need a, a loan from the general fund that is probably going to happen in fiscal year 2022 um, and then hopefully by fiscal year 2023 we'll be in a position where we won't need a loan and we won't need to um we won't need a loan but we will need to think about paying back the loan if we had already acquired one and so you know as we if we have a loan, then we have more expenditures because we're going to have to figure out a plan to pay that back. So, in short, I think there are several options, um, you know, but the faster that we can get these funds in a self-supported status, the better financially the county will be. The rating agencies also look at these enterprise funds and their self-supported status. As long as there is any support coming from the general fund, whether it be an appropriation uh, within the budget or even a potential loan that counts against us um, in the eyes of the rating agencies because they're not self-supported. Um, and so I would advocate for the increase if the commissioners um, wanted to push the increase to another year, 
Um, the options would be that it would have to be made up with, the deficit would have to be made up with a general fund appropriation or a loan from the general fund um, in, the, in the meantime. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, thank you. Any other questions for Sarah? Hearing none, next staff member. Good morning, commissioners. This is Leslie Hart. Can you hear me? Hi, Leslie. Good morning. Uh, Leslie Hart, Washington County Department of Business Development. Um, just wanted to uh, remind everyone that uh, the Boonesboro Farmers Market is this evening. That's Tuesday, located in the Boonesboro community. Um, they are practicing social distancing, and everyone is asked to wear masks and gloves, and they allow 10 people at a time into the market. So you line up and go through, and as people buy and leave, then they allow more people into the market. And then tomorrow is the Elks Farmers Market located uh, out on Robinwood Drive. And that starts at three o'clock. That's the first night for the, that particular farmers market. It is a producers only market. And uh, they are ready to go. Lots of people are planning on attending. And that market um, runs uh, four to uh, three to six, excuse me. And then finally, um, the Washington County Farm Bureau is proud again. And I had mentioned this last week, but they will be giving away free milk on Saturday, May the 23rd from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. or until the milk runs out. And that location is 123 West Franklin Street. And anyone who drives up in their car will receive one free gallon of milk. And anyone who walks up will receive one gallon of milk until supplies last. And I can tell you that the Farm Bureau is very honored and privileged to be doing this program, and they do have several more coming. So look for more information about free milk giveaways in the future. And uh, thank you, commissioners, for your time. Thank you, Leslie. Hey, what time is the farmer's market tonight? I missed it. Um, starts at four o'clock. It runs okay, four o'clock till 7 p.m. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Leslie. Leslie, this is Kirk. Was there a letter you needed to request um, support yeah, for? Yes. Oh, for the $500,000 grant for the garden? Yes, that's correct. I had, I had requested that last week. Uh, I didn't know if you needed me to reiterate my request formally this week. I'm um, just looking well, for a letter of support. Um, we, have you sent, us a, you sent us a copy of that, correct? Uh, yeah, Crystal Hart has that information, I believe. Yeah, while well, you have the commissioners on the line, have all of you looked at that letter and want a consensus to move forward with Leslie's request? Leslie, why don't you explain it briefly, please, just for the record, for Absolutely. anybody who may be listening. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so there are multiple partners involved in this uh, USDA grant request. Um, it is... Uh, uh, Goodwill Horizon, Community Action Council, Commission on Aging, uh, Washington County Food Council, um, BFF, which is a mobile farm market. Uh, Meritus is a collaborator on this project as well. And it is uh, to create, a, first of all, a community garden um, that will be growing local uh, product, vegetable fruits. We will backfill from local vegetable and farm, vegetable and fruit farmers. Um, until the program is completely up and running. But those local fruits and vegetables will then uh, be placed into multiple um, areas. But one of those is a com nonprofit community garden to be located somewhere in the core of Hagerstown that will be operated by Goodwill Horizon. And that nonprofit market will bring more local fruits and vegetables to people who live in the Hagerstown community that is considered a food desert, meaning they do not have walk access to grocery stores or places that they can walk to get groceries. So this is a really neat concept. There is also a, a food pharmacy program that will come in conjunction with the community garden um, that will uh, look at people that are at risk of high, uh, blood, pre high blood pressure, diabetes, and um, obesity. And they will be encouraged to uh, receive fruits and vegetables from the community garden free of charge. So this is a huge undertaking, um, lots of partners and collaborators, and we're very excited to submit the grant. Community Action Council will be the one 
um, managing and orchestrating the grant, um, but of course I'll be helping on the ag side of things. The letter of request is simply saying that you support this initiative. There is no financial responsibility to the county whatsoever. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Commissioners, any thoughts, consensus to support the letter? I'm good, Jeff. Randy. Well, Mano Shred, I'm good. Excellent idea. Terry's good. Wayne is good. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you, Leslie. Full support. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Have a great day. You're welcome. Any other staff to give a report? How about Krista? No, sir, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything from legal? All right. No, the other no, staff? No. Okay, thank you. Um, next, let's move on to our next agenda item, the FY20 Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program. Cody Miller are you, and Stephanie, are you with us? Here, um, President Klein, can you hear me? Stephanie, yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody, please introduce yourself in the matter. Cody Miller with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Thank you, Cody. Okay. And Stephanie, well, Senior Grant Manager, Office of Grant Management. Okay, please introduce the matter. Okay, the Washington County Sheriff's Office would like approval to apply to the FY20 Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program. The funding program allows for states, tribes, and local governments to support a broad range of activities to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus. Allowable projects and purchases include, but are not limited to, overtime equipment, including law enforcement and medical personal protective equipment, supplies such as gloves, masks, sanitizer, training, travel expenses when it is related to the distribution of resources, and addressing the medical needs of inmates in the local detention center. The Sheriff's Office is projecting 20000 in overtime, covering salary, fringe, and benefits, as well as designating $35,015 for equipment. The grant's performance period is for two years, and reoccurring expenses are not expected. Matching funds or in-kind support is not required. There are no unusual conditions or requirements attached to the acceptance of the grant. Commissioners, comments, thoughts? Motion to approve? Mr. I move motion to approve the submission of the grant application. Commissioner Key for second. Our, Commissioner Key for our second. First and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye by name. Aye, Jeff. Aye, Terry. Aye, Wayne. Aye, Commissioner. All right, motion. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Next yeah. up, public hearing, FY20 community community development block grant. Stephanie, you're back up with Brooke Grossman. Yes, thank you. Again, I'm Stephanie Leipold, Senior Grant Manager with the Office of Grant Management. And hopefully on the line also is Brooke Grossman, Chief Missions Officer with Horizon Goodwill Industries. I am on the we line. Oh, sorry. Hi, Brooke. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, we are seeking a motion to approve a resolution of support authorizing the submission of the county's application for fiscal year 20 community development block grant funding on behalf of Horizon Goodwill Industries, requesting $100,000 for program activities and $5,000 program income reuse for county administrative expenses and to accept funding as awarded. Washington County must provide a public hearing for the purpose of obtaining citizens' views before submission of an application to the Community Development Block Grant program. Horizon Goodwill Industries has requested that the county submit an application on their behalf. Local governments are required applicants on CDBG applications. The Department of Housing and Community Development has given the county permission to utilize $5,000 of CDBG program income on hand for administrative expenses. During state fiscal year 2020, the state of Maryland received an award of $7,778,516 
and a portion of this funding is being utilized for COVID-19 activities. The state provides CDBG funds for eligible projects based on meeting one of three national objectives. One is to benefit persons of low and moderate income, two, for prevention of elimination of slum or blight, and three is to meet an urgent need that is an immediate threat to community health, safety, or welfare. During state fiscal year 2020, additional requests are being received for public service activities related specifically to COVID-19 prevention, preparation, and response for the homeless population. If approved today, the county will submit an application requesting funds to be used to offer overnight shelter, I'm sorry, overnight emergency shelter to 10 of the most vulnerable persons on the coordinated entry list as identified by the Continuum of Care Shelter Coordinators, as well as evening and overnight shelter staffing, shelter supplies, twice daily shelter cleaning, staff and participant personal protective equipment, full-time case management services for one year to support the projected increase in need as a result of the COVID-19 crisis and emergency hotel stays when necessary. The grant application is available for viewing on Washington County's website at www.washco-md.net, and it can be located on the homepage towards the bottom under Documents for Public Viewing, or can be found on the Grant Management homepage. The grant will provide up to $100,000 for Horizon Goodwill Industries, and the Washington County Office of Grant Management will utilize up to $5,000 of CDBG program income for the cost of administering and monitoring the grant. This public hearing is a bit different due to the direction provided by the Department of Housing and Community Development. The last day for public comment was to be submitted yesterday, Monday, May 18th. The public was provided seven days prior to the meeting to provide comment for consideration. No comments were received. The County Attorney's Office has the application and resolution for signature. Are there any questions? No, no questions for me, commissioners. Hearing Randy, none, is there, is, there, is there a motion to approve? The support minus made a motion to approve the resolution. Is presented. Okay, is there a second? Commissioner Wayne, Randy, I second. I'll go. Okay, who's, who is the second? Wayne Kiefer. Wayne Kiefer second. Um, first and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye by name. Jeff, aye. Terry, aye. Thank Wayne, you. aye. Who else? Court, court management, aye. Thank Randy, you. aye. All right. Thank you, uh, folks, very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're, up. You're welcome. Next up, Maryland Agricultural Land Preservation Foundation recertification report approval. Chris Boggs, please introduce yourself in the matter. Good morning, commissioners. Chris Boggs, land preservation planner here for uh, Washington County Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, yes, this is the, uh, the recertification report for the Maryland Ag Land Preservation Foundation. Uh, every three years, uh, we're required to compile this report, uh, which they call a checklist, um, that updates the state Maryland Department of Planning and uh, the, the Maryland Agricultural Land Preservation Foundation on the uh, land preservation numbers, um, how we are used, how they relate to our comprehensive plan, and how they relate to our agricultural plans um, in the county. And of course, statewide. And uh, so every three years, we're required to produce this report in order to retain um, our certification. Um, so being a certified county in the state, some, some counties are certified, some are not, um, means, but if you are a certified county, that means you retain 75% of the state ag transfer tax that is, uh, that is collected by the state. Um, if you are not a certified county, you only receive 33% or, or one third of the state ag transfer tax that is collected. 
So uh, you can see there's a there can be a significant benefit to being a certified county, and namely because that is generally the funding that we use for our 60-40 match mechanism for the Maryland Ag Land Preservation Foundation easement program. Um, so you know they they match the 60% portion, we match the 40% portion, and we usually take our 40% out of that portion that comes from the, our state ag transfer tax. So um, what the state asked for is for us to uh, compile the uh, the checklist, um, give them some spreadsheets and maps of of, of uh, numbers and locations of easements and things like that, and then we need a uh, we need commissioner approval for the uh, for the checklist, um, oh, as well as planning commission and and ag board approval, which both of those we we already have. Um, so uh, any questions thus far? Commissioners, questions for Chris? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve as suggested. This is Randy, I'll approve as suggested. Motion to approve. Third Commissioner second. Winky for I second, Commissioner Wayne. Thank you. I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor to approve, say aye by name. Aye, Jeff. Hi, Randy. Hi, Cool Michael Schmidt. Hi, Terry. Is that four? Is that five? Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Next agenda item F20, FY21 Healthy Families Home Visiting Grant. Allison and um, Allison, you're up. <laughs> Good morning, Please Commissioners. Introduce yourself. Good morning. Allison Hartshorn, Grant Manager, Office of Grant Management. This morning, I'm seeking approval to submit the grant application to the Maryland State Department of Education in the amount of $277,993 and accept funding as awarded. The Washington County Office of Grant Management on behalf and in the direction, at the direction of the Local Management Board is seeking approval to submit the fiscal year 2021 Healthy Families Home Visiting Grant application to the Maryland State Department of Education. The Healthy Families Home Visiting Program is a comprehensive program modeled after the initiative Healthy Families America. The goal of this program is to prevent child maltreatment through early intervention, promote healthy growth, development, and strengthening of the parent and child relationship. The Washington County Health Department is the vendor contracted to provide this service. Funding in the amount of $6,606 is included in the award for county administrative support. No county funds are involved in this award. Do you have any questions? Commissioners, questions? Hearing none, motion to approve. This Commissioner Winky, sir, I make a motion to approve the grant application. Yes, thank Court you. Second. Second. Court Great, first, second. First and second in, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye by name. Aye, Randy. Aye, Court Aye, Terry. Aye, Wayne. Aye, Jeff. Okay, everybody else, is that, is that all five? All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up, contract award. You are 1460 local care team coordinator Rick Curry and Allison. Please introduce yourself in the matter. Rick Curry, director of purchasing. Can you hear me? Yeah, a little louder, maybe. Thank you. Okay. Allison, you still on? I'm still here. Thank you. Okay. Recommended motion is to award the contract for the local care team coordinator in Washington County to the responsible proposer with the responsive proposal Praxis Access LLC of Hagerstown in amount of $49,000. The purpose of the service is to fulfill the requirements of a community partnership agreement for fiscal years 2020 with the governor's office for children. The awarded funds for a local care team coordinator shall commence upon receipt of a fully executed contract between the Board of County Commissioners and the awarded vendor. The awarded contract shall expire on June 30th, 2020, with an option to renew up to two consecutive one-year periods through 2022. 
As also you can see in the ARF, it mentions it lists the members who serve on the coordinating committee and who evaluate the proposal and agreed that the proposal was deemed to be moved forward and made for recommendation. Also, you can see where the RFP was advertised in the local newspaper on the county's website and the state of Maryland's e marketplace website. <clears throat> Notice also was mailed to individuals on a on the Office of Grant Management's email list, where there were 16 persons of firms who accessed the RFP document from the website. And also there was one proposer or provider who was present on the pre-proposal conference. And the fiscal impact, which is funding from the governor's office in the amount of $49,000, concurrences from the coordinating committee. And also the commissioners have a scope of work of the excerpt of the RFP document that shows what the vendor will be doing for these services. And that concludes my recommendation for the award of local care team coordinator. Are there any questions? Commissioners, any questions? If not, entertain a motion to approve the award. This is Court Meinl Schmidt. I move to award the contract to the local care team coordinator in Washington County. Okay, I have a first. Is there a second? Randy, I'll second it. All right, I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, say aye by name. Aye, Wayne Keeper. Aye, Court Meinl Schmidt. Court I, Jeff I. Anybody else? Did I miss Randy I. Who else? Is that four, five. All right, that looks like to be five oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, contract award P U R one four six seven. Stop loss insurance coverage, Rick Curry, Rachel Brown, please introduce yourself in the matter. Again, Rick Curry, Director of Purchasing. Rachel, are you on? Yes, Rachel Brown, Director of Human Resources. Also, is CBiz representatives on the line? That's correct. Liz Lobsden. Okay. Recommended motion is to award a contract for stop loss insurance to the responsive, responsible proposer. Sunlight Financial of Wesley Hills, Massachusetts, who is also the incumbent, who submitted a total annual premium for option one of $1,039,993.08 with specific services, stop law services for $175,000 per claimant. The request for proposal was advertised on the state of Maryland's website, also on the county's website, and local newspaper, and also the ad of the direct mail was <clears throat> solicited sent to 12 potential providers of the insurance who had a, who had submitted the proposals by the deadline of April 24th, which we did receive 12. And the fiscal impact of the budget for health insurance and stop loss for fiscal 21 is in, in excess of $16 million. The concurrence is with recommendation for concurrence of the Director of Health and Human Services. Also the commissioners have a attached summary of CBiz's proposal of for the services, which I will turn over to CBiz to go through their uh, PDF slides and explain the um, services. Correct. This is Logston, and I also have myself and Becky Lewis. Becky, are you on? Okay. Well, we'll just run through the presentation. Um, I'm on the first page where it's a request for proposal analysis and recommendations by CBiz Employee Service Organization. As Mr. Curry said, uh, we re released purchase order number 1467 on April the 7th with a return date of April the 24th. Um, and then with stop loss, we needed to firm those numbers up. And by May 8th, we did have firm numbers from our vendors. 
Um, Washington uh, County has health insurance through Aetna and Aetna's care management programs. And then your prescription drug coverage is with CVS Caremark. Uh, the stop loss is currently with Sun Life today and it is always bid on an annual basis. So I'm not sure how your page numbers run, but I'm on page three. Um, medical vendor has been affected since 7 of 2016, and then the CVS Caremark is on 7119. Stop loss carriers look closely at who your vendors are, so we just want to point those out that that's part of the process. The stop loss policies are insurance that protects the plan from a significant claim cost associated with an individual member and as well as the group in an aggregate. These policies never automatically renewal, renew every year at the same rate because your claim population, your member health changes every year. So we have to look at that every year to make sure we get the best price. This year we used um, a, a third party type administrator called Benefit Mall and it has been brought into the stop loss marketing process. And we get better leveraging on bids utilizing this company. It comes at no cost to the commissioners. It's just part of a value add that CBiz provides. Rick already mentioned uh, the vendors that um, submitted bids, but we just make sure that we keep track of who's submitting and why they're not, you know, submitting a bid. So we can just make sure we're keeping, you know, control of the process. I have now moved to page five. And this page shows your current vendor in a column and then the renewal and then options. Of course, there's always options. Um, you can increase your stop loss level. Um, there's just numerous things that you can do to help, you know, reduce your monthly cost for the stop loss program, but you also want to make sure that you're looking at your risks. I'm going to just move to our recommendation. I know that you'll be able to flip back and forth while you're at home to, to see what we are recommending, but I'm going to move to page seven. And our recommendation is to remain with Sun Life at your current spec level. But we want you to move to a option one, which is adding into your plan a no new laser, meaning next year Sun Life would not be able to laser any of your members going into plan year or fiscal year 20. 22, ooh, that's a long ways off, and a 50% rate cap. We're re recommending this because it's gonna be advantageous to you in fiscal year 22. That laser or any of potential 50% rate cap is your risk. Um, each year you have claimants that are you know, above your spec level, you receive some dollars back from that spec level, and that's why you have, um, that's why you have stop loss insurance. We have seen growing in the community just an increased spend for specialty drugs. Currently, uh, your spend is 30% of your drug spend is for a specialty drug, and we look for that to even increase more as innovation innovation is increasing advancement in science and we're just coming up with better and better drugs that can you know cure and save people but it comes at a, a an extreme cost that is our recommendation option one this is uh court Miles schmidt i'm looking at the charts and under specific contract, under current and renewal, it says paid, but under all the options, they say 2412. What does that mean? That's so that you don't have a, a, a hole or a space of time where there isn't any coverage when you move to a different um, vendor. So today, you've been with Sun Life for so long that 
you know, there, there isn't any, any time that a claim wouldn't be paid by Sun Life. But if you would move to Anthem, you have a tail inside your claims and the Sun Life needs to keep paying those claims or somebody else needs to pick them up. So then they do a, a crossover. They'll, they'll pull in the draw, claim are occurring to you would happen to move to 7-1, there's a tail and that new company would pay that tail. Okay, so is that for 24 days, 12 days? That's what I'm trying I'm to figure sorry. out. I'm sorry, uh, months. I'm sorry, very sorry, that's 24 okay. days. Good question. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Staff, any other input? Hearing none, I believe there's a hey. recommended motion. Is there any other comments? Yeah, this is core management again. Mm -hmm. um, so the difference between option six and option one really is the no laser and then the 50% rate cap. Because option six, as we can see, is lower, but we're putting at risk a, a year away of a much higher increase. That, this is Liz from CBiz. That is correct. Um, Aetna did provide uh, a decent quote. However, it does not have that recommended no new laser and a 50% rate cap. Our client base today, I've had three clients that are had to invoke the 50% rate cap this year, which is a lot. <laughs> Obviously, when you talk about half the cost, right? So yeah. when we got through this marketing and we saw that, um, you know, um, Sun Life came in under our expected budget number that we placed in the projection, it was like, well, it would be a great year to have no new laser and the 50% rate cap. Yeah. This, this is Rachel Brown as well, just to add into the comments that Liz shared. We had a lot of discussion at the committee and with everything going on currently with the COVID pandemic and not knowing exactly what situations we may be seeing in our member group um, with conditions or long-term lasting effects, we also thought this would be a good year for us to consider the no new laser and the rate cap to prevent or minimize the amount of risk that we're maintaining if we do see ongoing situations from the COVID situation with our health conditions. Perfect, thank you. This is core management. I move uh, to stay with Sun Life with option one with no new laser and a 50% rate cap. I have a first, is there a second? This is Randy, I'll second that. Okay, first and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, motion to awards. Say aye by name. Aye, Court Minor Schmidt. Aye, Wayne Keith. Aye, Randy. Okay, Randy and Wayne. Terry? Aye, Terry Baker. Aye, Jeff Klein. Five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, County Commissioners of Washington County Public Improvement Bonds of 2020 and Refunding Bonds of 2020. Lindsay Rader and Sarah, please introduce yourself. Good morning, Hi. Commissioners. This is Sarah Greaves, Chief Financial Officer, and I believe Lindsay Rader, Bond Council, is on the line. Lindsay, are you there? I am. This is Lindsay Rader, Funk and Bolton, Bond Council to the County. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, as we move into this conversation, commissioners, I'd just like to remind you that these resolutions are for the bonds um, that were voted on in the fiscal year 2020 budget last May. Um, and with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lindsay for um, commentary. Good morning. This, uh, you have a resolution before you providing for the issuance by the county of two series of general obligation bonds this year. 
The first series is the public improvement bonds of 2020, and they are essentially new money bonds to be issued to finance certain infrastructure, public facilities, environmental and educational projects. Also this year, we are looking to have the county issue the refunding bonds of 2020, and proceeds of those bonds, if issued, will be applied to currently refund in whole or in part the county's outstanding taxable um, Build America Bonds direct payment series 2010B, which are first subject to redemption on July 1, 2020. Um, last year, you'll recall, we only issued one series of new money bonds. So this is a little bit different this year since we're contemplating both a series of new money bonds and a series of refunding bonds. But the resolution, except to the extent it has provisions regarding the refunding bonds, is very similar to last year's resolutions. The public improvement bonds will be issued in an original aggregate principal amount not to exceed $15,335,000. The, the resolution before you assumes an original aggregate principal amount of refunding bonds in of $9,505,000, which was based on uh, then current market conditions at the time this resolution was submitted to the county for your packages for today. However, the resolution provides that ultimately the refunding bonds can be issued in a maximum original aggregate principal amount of $11,500,000. That upsized amount is just to take into consideration any major market swings uh, between now and the time that we price these bonds. The resolution has a lot of standard provisions regarding the process for the bond sale. Um, the form of the bonds is an exhibit to the resolution, or excuse me, it's, is within the body of the resolution. Uh, exhibits to the resolution include a list of the potential refunded 2010B bonds, uh, the form summary NOS, which we will need to have published in the local newspaper before the sale date and the form of notice of redemption for the refunded bonds is Exhibit C. Um, as in past years, uh, the commissioners delegate to the chief financial officer the authority both prior to and upon the sale of the bonds to make adjustments to the amortization schedules that are laid out in the resolution to account for market conditions um, the premiums that are received by the successful bidders for the bonds uh, and tax and other considerations. Uh, two things that are slightly different this year, the, uh, the board decided that for certain environmental projects, the amortization schedule for the public improvement bonds relating to those particular projects could be on an up to 30 year basis within limitations of the legislation authorizing the bonds. Also, the county is, an, is waiting to hear um, whether the Maryland Water Quality Financing Administration is able to provide loan funding for two of the environmental projects that are contemplated. And if we find before the sale that water quality is able to provide such loan funding, the amount of the public improvement bonds as issued and sold will be reduced to um, take those out of the, the, the projects being financed from these public improvement bonds. And we'll be, we will be coming back to you at a later date with authorizing legislation for those two projects to be financed through the Maryland Water Quality Financing Administration. And if, water quality provides those loans. Those loans will also be um, evidenced by general obligation bonds issued by the county to the Maryland Water Quality Financing Administration. Manufacturers and Traders Trust Company will serve as the bond register and paying agent for the bonds as it has in the past. The arbitrage group has been selected to serve as the verification consultant, assuming that the market uh, stay steady enough that it makes sense from a financial standpoint for the county to refund the 2010B bonds in whole or in part 
as we near the, the bond sale. Uh, currently, the bond sale is scheduled for June 9th and closing for June 23rd, but authority is delegated to the chief financial officer to postpone and reschedule those uh, sale and closing dates in the event the market moves the wrong way. Um, the resolution provides for the pledge of the full faith and credit and unlimited taxing power to payment of the bonds. We anticipate that both bonds, the, or the interest on both series of bonds will be tax exempt for federal and state income tax uh, purposes and necessary covenants regarding the federal tax exempt nature of the bonds are contained within the resolution. Uh, the resolution provides that if the refunding bonds are issued, that the, the 2010 B bonds selected for refunding will be redeemed no later than 45 days after the 2020 refunding bonds are issued. Um, and that is a general overview. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Commissioner's questions? Staff, any more comments? Um, I would just like to thank Lindsay Rader for um, coming online today and making the presentation. Um, she always does a great job. I'd like to thank my staff for all the work that they have um, in this. And if there are no other questions, if there are no questions from the commissioners, I think that concludes the presentation today. And we would ask for you to um, consider the recommended motion. Okay. Commissioners, any more thoughts, comments? Is there a motion to approve the resolution? This is Court Miles Schmidt. I move to approve. Okay, I have a first. Is there a second to approve the motion? Resolution. Commissioner Wayne Kiefer, I second. Thank you, Wayne. I have a first and a second. Is there any first further discussion? Hearing none, I call for a vote to approve. Say aye by name. Randy, I, I, I quit my Who's next? Thank you. Who's next? Hi, good morning, commissioners. This is Susan Small. Hold on, we haven't finished. The... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I, I have a first I think and second. You, I think you got everybody, Jeff. I think everybody yeah. answered. I probably missed them. I couldn't hear. All right, that's a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much, Lindsay and Sarah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank all you. Right. Next up. The review of the draft of Washington County and City of Hagerstown COVID-19. Susan Small, you're up. Thank you very much. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to today review the draft of our uh, Washington County and City of Hagerstown uh, Small Business Emergency Relief Grant Fund. Um, I don't have a recommendation necessarily or a vote for you. Uh, we're not announcing or opening the application process to the business community at this time. Uh, rather, this is just for review of the draft. Um, at this point to, to the COVID-19 um, plan, the City um, of Hagerstown Department of Community and Economic Development, along with uh, Washington County's Department of Business Development, has been actively engaged in the Emergency Operations Center uh, stakeholders in the emergency support function 18 and uh, we are now transitioning into the recovery support function 2 for economic recovery. Um, as we do that we're taking a look at the new um, CARES Act which has recently been approved by the federal government and it, it's been established to assist county and municipal governments offset expenses incurred in their response to COVID-19. Um, the Washington County government has been allotted 13 million $178,443 for non-public health related response activities to the COVID-19 crisis. So again, the purpose of today's discussion is to review and gather comments um, of the Washington County and City of Hagerstown COVID Small Business Emergency Relief Fund Grant. Um, just to give you kind of a general overview, our department as well as um, the city's Department of Economic Development has been in partnership with several other stakeholders in the community to take a look at um, how to utilize this funding in the CARES Act. Um, we've, we've called it the uh, Business Stabilization Program. 
and we have a propo proposed funding amount of 8.9 million, just over 8.9 million. Um, the program will be a grant or loan program created to help local employers sustain operations, st uh, stabilize economic and employment by retaining employees, paying their vendors, utilities, rent or mortgage and address any unforeseen reduction in production, consumer demand and unbudgeted or unknown costs associated with the new way of operating under the COVID regulations. Um, generally, we're intending to distribute funds based on eligibility associated with specific industries or associated with thresholds, um, such as employee counts, <clears throat> excuse me, time in business, and a requirement to be in good standing. Um, the task force that's, that's been um, putting this together has created uh, the draft, which was attached for you, with a program description, the um, application and guidelines, and we are still actively working on the efficiency and the administration of the program. Uh, the portal or electronic acceptance of documents is still under investigation. Uh, I, I do have Josh available uh, from Information Systems as well. He and I have been in regular communication looking at different programs um, to make this a, a very smooth process. Um, so as we move forward uh, today, we're just seeking approval. Um, Jill Thompson is also on the line from uh, the Department of Community and Economic Development from the city. Um, so we're looking to just approve the concept and a, and a specific level of detail that we're presenting today um, to just allow the city and the county and uh, the attorneys to move forward or to make any necessary edits so that we can finalize the documents. That way when um, the funding becomes available, it will allow us to move quickly in order to implement the program when we've received uh, the final um, guidelines from the federal government. Hey, Susan, Kirk, um, Susan, do you mean you just want a consensus to move forward with this, or not a motion? Kirk, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I'll defer to Kirk, but I, I believe that's what we're asking to do. A, a, mo a motion or a consensus? I'm sorry, a consensus. Okay, Kirk, is that appropriate? Uh, it is appropriate. The count, well, I mean, really, you can do it either way. Um, obviously, the um, city is going to be looking at this as well uh, because they're our, our partner in the EOC, and this is a, a collaborative effort. Um, and they're going to be looking at that at their meeting today, I believe. All right, commissioners, your uh, your, your pleasure. Consensus or motion. Uh, this is Commissioner this is, I have some questions if I could ask. Um, a couple here, I'm sorry. Um, one, the first question is, um, I, I know with the federal funding for similar purposes to help businesses, there were some issues with getting funding to those people. Who, who are the individuals that will make these calls as to who, who qualifies, who doesn't? Could you remind me of that? Um, well, we haven't, we haven't quite... Uh, gotten that far in terms of actually naming um, which position will or, or if there will be a steering or a committee to decide that um, that's part of what we're still coordinating however um, the grants typically would get processed first come first serve um, mm -hmm. and and there will be some uh, obligations of the businesses to provide us um, with some of their uh, either revenue year over year so we can the um, details of the loss um, and be able to make uh, a good faith effort to um, get back to business as usual use, using this money. Um, okay, I just want to be, you know, I, I would be careful and I'd like to know more information on who will decide. You know, I'm certainly glad the city of Hagerstown is involved in this. They're a big player, obviously, in Washington County. I just want to make sure some of the businesses in our outline communities would also be included um, and, and would be able to anyway. The other question I have, um, the list of ineligible applicants. Um, I have personal, you know, uh, uh, I'm personally in agreement with some of these as well, but um, home-based businesses. I, I know some home-based businesses that employ people and, you know, why would a home-based business not be in, in a tattoo business? I, I have no tattoos on, on my body, but we also have some nationally renowned tattoo artists and, you know, that's certainly a legitimate business. I, I just want to, you know, government picking winners and losers there is a big theme for me all the time. 
um, especially during some of the lockdowns and what businesses have been forced to close and which can remain open. Um, is that our call or is that part of the CARES Act that makes that call on which businesses can't be included? So um, I'll answer it in two parts. So I, I appreciate the feedback because, um, you know, this is a great way for us to, so we generally took a mechanism that was already sort of in place for um, some of the incentive programs and then customize it to this program. However, there's going to be things that we can alter. And this is one, your, your comments based on home-based businesses and tattoo businesses and the like will definitely um, take that into consideration. That's why I wanted to have this conversation. Um, the second, um, you know, we, um, we're willing to certainly take a look at um, any of the businesses and not, we don't want to make those decisions, but we have not received all of the federal guidelines yet in terms of what they may or may not require or um, eligible or ineligible. We're not 100% certain on what those guidelines will be. So um, generally, we'll make, I've made notes here. Um, so as we receive those, I would be happy to uh, bring you an update. Thanks, Susan. Yep. Thank you. So you're still asking for consensus or a motion? Commissioners, what's your choice? Hold on, this is uh, Court Monster, and I get another quick question on this. Um, under the eligibility, business must demonstrate financial stress or disrupted operations, may include but are not limited to. Um, notice of inability to make rent or loan payment due to reduced sales income suspended operations. Um, I understand on the bottom it says other circumstances subject to review on a case by case basis, but I don't want to be stuck on just the businesses that are you know behind. If a business is dipped into their savings to continue operations and continue paying, or also you know I, I don't want them to be ineligible because they might have been working on you know saving up to to have an expansion and then now they've dipped in their savings to try to run everything appropriately. So I don't want them to be excluded from this because they they did have a substantial savings that they've uh, lost revenue um, but maybe aren't late yet on their payments yeah yeah there's um it's it's tough to make uh one eligible use um so specific when there could be certain scenarios that could alter it just slightly um and we know that generally uh loss of revenue is is not an eligible um that they can't apply because of lost revenue. However, it can, you can apply for an, in, you know, an inability to be able to pay certain things or vendors or that, or staff or rent. Um, so I know what you're saying. And again, we'll, we'll try and maybe alter that wording a little bit. So um, it, it's a little bit more inclusive and not so specific to that. Again, um, Jill's on the line with me and she and I have been working through this, um, so all these comments are really good feedback. Yeah, well, I guess I'm scared of two things. One, uh, a business saying, hey, if I need to be late on a rent, pay rent payment so I get this letter, then okay, I'm gonna miss my payment for a month and you guys will give me money. Or right. two is, or is the to the guy that's, you know what, I'm paying right now, but in two months, I'm not gonna be able to. We wanna mm -hmm. make sure that they're taken care of also. Right. Okay. That's it. And uh, I'm fine with it. You know, I'll make a consensus that I think this is a great starting point. All right. Um, is that a motion or a consensus? I I think consensus is at, at this point, but I think it's a great starting point and okay. um, to continue moving forward with this. All I right, agree sir. with the consensus. I agree with the consensus. Um, just Good. a few all tweaks mainly and you know who makes up that group because i know i'm going to receive calls if a business is ineligible or, or you know something happens not that I anticipate right, something will happen. all right terry randy consensus here on my behalf randy's consensus terry you okay terry's okay with consensus all right there we go thank you susan thank Everybody you very Jill. much thank you thank you susan Commissioners, next need a motion to go into closed session. Support management and make a motion to go into closed session. Is there a second? Wayne Key for our second. 
All right, first and second, any further discussion? If not, say aye by name. Aye, Terry. Aye, Jeff. Aye, Court Management. Aye, Randy. Aye, aye. Wayne. Thank you. Let's take a five-minute break and we'll convene in closed session. Thank you, everyone.